Hi guys, um, just a quick video since uh, many of you have taken 261 with me and so this is for 262 how to prepare a lab notebook. Um, each instructor is very specific in how they want their notebook. Some, some of the instructors have very rigid rules and some don't really care as long as you write out the procedure. Um, I think I'm sort of in between. But uh, I did write out some guidelines and this is for my 261 class. Uh, but same thing sort of applies for 262. Uh, the main um, similarities are, you know, the type of notebook. I like for you to have a thread-bound book. These are very cheap notebooks you could buy at the grocery store, usually a dollar or two. Um, some students bring in a spiral notebook, and if that's all you have, I guess that's okay. But I, I prefer to have a thread-bound notebook um, because uh, scientific record you know, it's very important. You don't want to have the ability of erasing or ripping out pages. You want to have all data is good data in terms of giving you information. So even if you made a mistake, that mistake could actually be very helpful for you. So in science, we never use whiteout. We always use pen. We always write things permanently, okay? If you make a mistake, you just draw one line across it and you write over it, okay? Um, but anyway, start with a, just a plain composition notebook. If you want a fancier one, there are ones that are like $7 in the bookstore with the page numbers on the pages. That's sort of nice, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Second thing is um, leave a couple of pages blank at the beginning just for table of contents. You're going to write the date, the name of the experiment, and then... Um, and you're just going to keep filling that in as you make entries. So usually one or two pages is fine for that. And you can use the same one from another class or, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, the other thing is you want to start numbering the pages. So wherever you do start, you know, just number them so you know what page different things are on. And that helps because in your table of contents, you can say this experiment starts on page 20, and then you go to page 20, and there it is, okay? Uh, so it helps to have the pages numbered. All right, um, the main thing is it's very simple. Okay, all, I'm, all I want you to do is know the purpose. So first thing you're gonna do is write the experiment number and the purpose. Okay, why are you doing this lab? What are your main goals? All right, so uh, let's just write it down here. So you're gonna have uh, experiment number, um, whatever, and then the title, and this is on the top of the page. It's great if you can have a date for the experiment, so you can leave that blank and fill it in when you get to lab, or if you know the date of lab, you can put that in here. So the date, it always helps to have the date. All right, and then um, put um, the purpose. You know, why are you doing this lab? What are your um, goals for the lab? And also the techniques that you're gonna learn. Now, the difference in 262 is that we're mostly doing synthesis labs. Okay, so that means you're going to be making stuff. You're going to make new molecules. So it really helps if you have a reaction. All right, so what is the reaction you're doing? Just write it down plainly. And then it's really great if you also have a mechanism for that reaction. So, you know, reaction could be like A plus B makes C. And then the mechanism would be, oh, A is going to attack B, and then, you know, so you have something going on like this, uh, and then da-da-da-da, whatever it is. You're showing with the electron pushing arrows the mechanism for how you think it happens. Uh, sometimes we don't know the mechanism, so you might have to answer that as a post-lab question. But if you do know the mechanism, it's always nice to include that as well. Uh, the next thing is it always safety first, okay? No matter what, safety first. I mean, none of this is going to help if you're dead, right? So you want to make sure that you are fully functioning. When you leave lab, you're no scrapes, no burns, no cuts, you know. So um, make sure that for safety, you make note of whatever the book says. So the book will say hazards, you know, um, watch out for open flames, da-da-da, hot plate, acids, whatever. And then you also want to write out your hazards for chemicals, so chemical hazards. So maybe that's things like, you know, methylene chloride is um, a potential carcinogen, right? Now, another way that you can do these hazards, you can write down, I mean, there's a hazard for everything. Even water is hazardous, right? If you drink too much water, it upsets the electrolytic balance of your body. You, you know, I mean, everything's a hazard in too, too much high quantity. So 
given that everything's a hazard, potentially, um, just look up the chemicals that you're using and figure out what they, how they're classified. So let me show you that really quick. Now, you could write out a list of all the hazardous chemicals, or um, I suggest to my students these days that because you have some chemicals that recur, like we use methylene chloride a lot, unfortunately, um, just start a list in the back. Just say, you know, okay, chemicals I'm going to use, I'm just going to start listing in the back. And you're going to, um, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> and you're going to uh, have a list of, you know, here's the name of the chemical, here's why it's hazardous. Here's the name of the chemical, here's why it's hazardous. And that way you have sort of an idea when you're using these things what, um, what those hazards are. And the type of hazards you should be looking for are um, categorized as a uh, GHS, okay? So if you just sort of Google GHS, let me show you what I found. Um, all right, so GHS pictogram, these are symbols that are universally known um, to people. Um, so if you see fire, you know, that means flammable. These are stickers required by law. We have to have all of our chemicals labeled with these stickers. So when you get to lab and you see a bottle of something, it's gotta have these stickers on it and you need to have sort of a sense of how to treat that material. How dangerous is it? Uh, how do you store it? How do you handle it? So it's, it's good for you to have this written down. So for every chemical, let's say, uh, you know, you just do a quick Google search on like um, methylene chloride, for example, okay? My, I'm in Italy and my Google's going to Italian Google. <laughs> so anyway, yours is going to look better probably. But uh, um, when methylene chloride comes up, you're going to look for, um, see it's all in Italian, I, I can't read this, but you're going to see um, probably an MSDS. And in fact, you can do methylene chloride. So whatever chemical you have, type that name of the chemical and M um, SDS, safety data sheet. And then the pictogram should show up. It should tell you what classification this chemical is under. Um, and then you write that down in your lab notebook. Again, why do I say write it down the list in the back? Because you're going to have these same you're potentially going to have these same chemicals over and over and over again, and maybe you might get sick of writing it down. Otherwise, just go to the lab and write, write it down there. That's fine. So here's a safety data sheet from Fisher Scientific, just you know, a very big chemical company supplier and uh, so it'll tell you a lot of things about it it'll tell you like you can see here it may cause drowsiness dizziness that I don't need to know all that information I just need to know the gist um, you just need to know the gist of it so um, in the back maybe you write down you know CH2Cl2 write down the name of it it's called methylene chloride and then find out what pictogram it is and just tell me what those words are for that pictogram okay so all right, so here we are, safety data sheet for methylene chloride. And the main thing is under hazardous identification. So you want to see, okay, what kind of um, pictogram is it? And see, it's right here. So may cause cancer, may, you know, so you can see these two pictures. And then compare it to, I'll have, um, I'll have this posted in Google or in Canvas, um, you know, just see that this, this symbol means possible carcinogen or respiratory um, <clears throat> sensitive material and then this exclamation point is acutely toxic so all you have to do is write down those words carcinogen acutely toxic then you know when you use it ah, I better be careful it, carcinogen means it can cause cancer so you want to be careful not to drink it not to get it all over yourself right so it's good to know those things so safety first that's very important I'm going to check for that every lab um, first lab, I see if you have it or not. Then after that, I ask you to make sure that you have it. All right. Uh, you also want to write, write down, how do I handle the waste for this? Does it go into aqueous waste, halogenated waste, or organic waste? Okay. So make sure you know which of those it's in. And if not, I mean, you can just ask me during lab, you know, which, which bin does this go under? I didn't write it down. But usually the book will tell you how to handle that. But if you don't know, make sure you ask. It's very important to dispose of waste properly. Now, for synthesis labs, um, I, it also helps when you do uh, synthesis to know your percent yield. So you'll be asked, not for percent recovery, because what you're making is not present at the beginning. 
you're not just isolating it, you're actually synthesizing it. So you're going to calculate percent yield, and you may need to know at some point what are some of the physical properties of what you're starting with. What are these chemicals, boiling points or melting points or densities or IR frequencies or, you know, whatever it is that will help you identify or work with these uh, reagents. So for synthesis labs, which mostly are in Chem 262, include a table of physical constants. So we just talked about waste, hazards, da-da-da. It also helps to have a list of um, these properties in your notebook. So, okay, so this is not table of con contents. This is physical constants, okay, physical Constants. What do I mean by constants? Um, I mean, they may not be constant, but um, for the most part, you know, let's say you have something like camphor, okay, and you're, you know, let's say you want to know um, about this reaction you're doing, either making camphor or using camphor to make something else. So you've got a molecular weight or molar mass, okay? I want to know what is that molar mass because you need that for your percent yield calculation, all right? So you're going to put your, you know, your chemicals here. You're going to put um, molecular weight for doing molar mass calculations. And then either a melting point or a boiling point. And the reason why that's important is because you want to know at what temperature do these things cause changes in state. Um, that helps to know, like, what if you do a distillation and you have a temperature at 60, but the boiling point is at 100? You know, you need to know that you're not going to be boiling that. If you want to boil it, you need to raise the temperature. So it helps to have that information. Sometimes density is really helpful because um, you have a liquid and you want to know its mass at, you know, let's say about room temperature. Well, what is that mass going to be? You can calculate it if you have the density. Um, another thing that's useful are IR frequencies. So you're starting to use IR a lot more. And um, make sure for all of these things that you know what the units are. You know, grams per mole, degrees Celsius, grams per milliliter, and wave numbers, centimeter, um, inverse centimeters. So write down the units up here, and then you don't have to write the units down here. Um, and then just make a list of those chemicals which are important in the reaction. Or that might be important because you're doing distillation in a certain solvent. Maybe it helps to know some of the solvents, IR frequencies, densities, melting points as well. Uh, you probably don't need to know things like um, sodium sulfate or, you know, like sort of ancillary materials that you need. But mainly you need the things that are in the reaction. Okay, so write, write those things down and look up those, that information. And that could be very useful during lab and after in the calculations. Finally, it's the same kind of stuff that you normally have. Um, you have um, the procedure. And I don't recommend that you copy it word for word. And I don't want you to photocopy it. Some people ask me, can I type it because my handwriting's really bad. I think any activity where you're actively reading it and rewriting it is fine with me, whether you type it or not. But uh, I do need to know that you did it, okay? Don't have someone else type it for them and then say, hey, can I borrow yours? And just copy and paste it from them. Because the purpose of writing the procedure is that you've read it, you've thought about it, and you've summarized it, or you've made it into your own. So in, in your own words, that's the best way to do it. Um, for me, I like to take all these words and make pictures, you know? The procedure, um, instead of writing all these words, I'm going to maybe write, you know, oh, here's five test tubes, and I'm going to put two mils of this in there, and, you know, so to me, that's a great opportunity to make it more of my own. Um, then, as long as you know, though, what you're doing, I don't care if it's in words or pictures. And then leave some space on the side or on the other side of the page. Some students, uh, I recommend that they write their procedure on one side, and then they have the other side available for notes and things. So that could be nice. Some people like to write everything down, and then they just write their notes on a separate page. That's fine, too. Um, whatever works for you is fine, as long as you have your data written down. Because I like to check at the end of lab, where's your data? How do I know? Because I always have students say, oh, I didn't write down my data. Do you, do you know what I can do? And I'm like, I don't know. You got to have your data before you leave. So make sure you have your data because I sign off on that. Make sure you have it. And that's pretty much it for the, the pre-lab write-up, okay? Um, you're not usually going to have any pre-lab questions, but if you do, I'll let you know in advance. And then the rest of it is all sort of taken from your notebook and put into a report or handout on Canvas.
All right. Good luck, you guys.